Welcome back. Today we're going to be answering some Poisson distribution questions on GeoGebra. Now, if you're looking for a video to tell you what a Poisson distribution is or what characteristics or formula is used for it, then you probably want to check out that video up above. That will break down all of those, but today we're specifically answering probability questions for Poisson distribution using GeoGebra. And you can see now that over there is an example of the type of question we're going to be solving today. We're going to break down all the steps and see exactly how GeoGebra can make this type of question super easy for you. Hey guys and welcome back. Remember, my name is Daniel Caproni and this is Probability and Statistics. As mentioned, today we're going to be learning about Poisson distributions on GeoGebra. If you don't know how to get there, it is geogebra.org. From there, I'm going to show you all the steps to get to exactly what we need for today's question. All right, so here we are at geogebra.org. Now, once you're here, we do not want their default calculator. That's more of like a desmos.com type thing. Today, we're going to be jumping down to this GeoGebra Classic button down here. Now, one of two things will happen when you open that. Either A, a menu is going to pop up automatically that prompts you to go to the probability section. It could be down here or on the side. If that menu does not pop up like it did for me just now, then you can go ahead and go to the three lines over here at the top right-hand corner of your screen and go down to Perspectives. And you can click on the probability option in there. And that's going to actually bring up our probability calculator. Now, you'll notice that right now we're looking at a normal curve, which is not what we want to be doing. What we want to be looking at is a Poisson distribution. So if you go into this menu right here where it says normal, you can actually change the normal distribution to be Poisson. So I'm going to go and change that to Poisson. And now you can see we have a histogram here and it's going to be set up much more as the probability distribution we're looking for, a Poisson distribution. Now notice the first thing it's asking us for is the mean in the given situation. So let's go ahead and refer back to the question that we have. So this question is looking at a given intersection having an average of three accidents per month. And what we want to see is what's the probability that next month there will be four. So there's two things to identify in this question. There's the mean, which it says was three, and there's the X value we're looking for, which it said was four. So let's go ahead and look here. Obviously, as mentioned, the first thing it's asking for is the mean. Now, we just said that the average here was three, three accidents per month. So once I type in that three and hit enter, you'll see that my distribution has already changed shape to be more representative of this mean of three situation. Over here on the right hand side, you can see all the probabilities for any number from zero up to 14. Now it stops at 14 because once you hit there, it's just gonna repeat zero forevermore after that because the probability is so low that they're like, all right, it's not really even worth mentioning because it's such a small probability beyond that point. Now, if I go back to looking at this, the mean of three, there are two ways I can solve this question. If I wanna know the probability of there being four accidents in a given month, I can either look over here in my table and see that right here four says that the probability is 0.168. That's your answer. You could be done right there. The probability that there will be four accidents in the next month is a 16.8% chance or 0.168 if you're just leaving it as a decimal. Now, the second way you can do this is if you have one number, you can actually plug that number in to both these slots right here, which you can do by going ahead and clicking on the four as well. And you can see it auto filled those in for us. And it gives you the same answer right here that it did in the table. And it even highlights it in the graph for you so you can see it visually that we're just looking at the probability of getting four accidents in a month instead of considering all possibilities in this distribution. Now where GeoGebra really shines is when you have questions where X is a range of numbers instead of just one exact number. So in the last example we looked at, it was just looking at the probability of there being four accidents. But what if we look at this question instead where it says X is gonna be two or less. So we're looking at the probability that there are two or less accidents. Well, in that case, we have to refer to our three buttons down here in the bottom left-hand corner. Now the button all the way on the left always shades the number you put in and anything below that number. 
The one on the right shades the number you put in and anything above that number. Whereas the one in the middle allows you to put it between two numbers that you give it, including the numbers you put in. So you have to be careful here because if it says like something strictly less than three, well, three is not less than three. So you will have to put in two because it includes the number. But in this case, it does say two or less. So it's including it already for us. So all I have to do with this answer is leave my mean as three and change it to the left hand button so that we're shading below whatever number we plug in and then change that number to a two. I hit enter always just to make sure everything is in there and up to date. And you can see it has updated my graph up above to highlight two, one and zero, which is two or less. It has highlighted in my table over here, the numbers two, one and zero for two or less. And it gives us the final answer right here of 0.4232. So what's the probability of having two or less accidents in a given month? About a 42.32% chance, or if we left it as the decimal, 0.4232. Now, you can do this with any mix of questions. If I said I wanted to know four or more, I could go and hit the above button over here and just switch that to four and hit enter and you can see it highlights them all over here. I could say I want to know the probability that there will be somewhere between five and eight, including those numbers. Look at that, five and eight is already the one that popped up, but I might want to just go and click in there just to make sure and hit enter and it gives us the probability for that. So you can mix and match your questions here, but at the end of the day, this makes Poisson questions extremely easy. All you need to know is the mean for the given situation you're working with and you need to know what range of X values you're looking for. And that's it. That's all you need to know in order to do a Poisson distribution on GeoGebra. Now remember, this handles any type of X. So it could be one single X, like exactly five, or it can be a range of Xs, like a number and less than that, a number and more than that, or between two specific points. It does cover everything. Well, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button below. That helps me out in the long run by getting more views and to know that you guys appreciate what I'm putting out there. Also, if you want to keep getting videos like this, go ahead and hit the subscribe button for my new videos each and every week. Remember, my name is Daniel Caproni, and this has been Probability and Statistics. I hope you have a fantastic day.